Hi, my name is Scott Newman with Education Services for Juniper Networks, and today we're going to talk about using the policy tracing tool. We're going to talk a little bit about what the policy tracing tool is used for, uh, and then we're going to actually go in and show you when you can use the policy tracing tool. So we'll have a, an actual demo that we'll be able to show you with a couple different examples that we'll look at. The first thing we want to talk about is what the policy tracing tool is actually used for. The policy tracing tool is available on both the Junos Pulse Secure Access Service as well as the Junos Pulse Access Control Service. For the purpose of the demo today, we're going to show you uh, how it's used with the Secure Access Service. But um, if you are watching this uh, and hoping to learn more with the Access Control Service, uh, the fundamental concepts are essentially the same. The main factor here that we want to look at with the policy tracing tool is when we want to use it. In other words, uh, what types of issues can we use the policy tracing tool for and when should we use that tool? So to look at an example here, um, let's just take a look at this uh, drawing. We have Alex Agent here. Here's our little end user who is saying, I am not able to sign in. Now, he could be reporting a variety of issues. It could be an issue with uh, the user unable, uh, being unable to sign in, as is reported here in this particular case. Could be an issue with not being able to access a particular resource. The key concept uh, with the policy tracing tool is it helps us troubleshoot configuration issues either here on the secure access service could be configuration issues or perhaps endpoint compliance issues on the actual agent or it could be uh, something to do with the backend server that they're trying to access but most of the time basically what the policy tracing tool is used for is to help us troubleshoot configuration uh, and, and basically tell us a little bit about what the Junos Pulse Secure Access Service is seeing. So we're looking at the troubleshooting from this device's perspective. So in order to use the policy tracing tool, you have to have a little bit of comfort with the access management framework. In other words, you have to understand how sign-in policies and authentication realms work in order to, to essentially move forward here. So if you're uncomfortable with that, go back, get some understanding, and you'll be able to get a much better picture of how the policy trace tool works. All right, so as we take a look here, we have a Junos Pulse Secure Access Service. It's all set up, ready to go. And we've got some just real basic configuration. We have a sign-in policy, a real straightforward, um, just default policy. We're tied to an LDAP authentication server, so it's a back-end Windows 2003 server that's used. And then we have, again, just real basics here. We're using the, the user's realm. The role mapping rules are really straightforward. We're doing group membership for role mapping. And then just one role here, we've just got this uh, basic employee access role that we've defined. And then we have some real basic resource pro profiles that we've set up for web access. So for the purpose of the example today, we're using real straightforward, real easy scenarios. Uh, and the troubleshooting factor of this is going to be fairly simple as well. But it really doesn't matter whether the, <laughs> the, the purpose here is to show you how to use the policy trace tool. And then you'll be able to use this tool and, and hopefully understand what it's telling you, no matter what the difficulty of the, the actual problem that you're facing. So let's switch over here to the policy tracing tool itself. So we're going to go to troubleshooting, user sessions, policy tracing. And then we're going to go ahead and put in the name and the realm that we're using. We're just using the realm here. And then what we want to record in this case is just pre-authentication, authentication, role mapping. So this is going to tell us, again, just what's happening with the actual connection. So we're going to go ahead and start recording. Now we're going to switch over to our end user here. 
And you'll notice it's, this is an important factor. Whenever you're doing a policy trace, you want to make sure that you are testing from the same environment as the actual end user. If the end user is coming in and they're coming in from um, a particular network then you want to make sure that you're testing from that work network as well. A lot of times you might hear somebody say, well, Alex is saying that he cannot sign in. But um, Peter, on the other hand, says he can sign in just fine. If they're coming from two different areas, then that might be the difference. Because there could be a firewall in play or something else in, in the mix. All right, so we're going to sign in with Alex. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to purposely type in the incorrect password. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to just show you what it's going to look like here. All right, so we sign in. Right away, it comes back invalid username or password. So it sounds pretty, pretty close to what we'd expect, right? Wrong password. So if we go back here to the administration, though, we'll notice just looking at the logs, user access log, you notice that it says login failed using auth server employee LDAP. Reason failed. So that doesn't necessarily tell us why it failed. So it could be that the end user just doesn't know what their password is, and they're typing in the wrong password. But they don't know that it's the incorrect password. So they've called you to say, OK, why can't I sign in? So if we look at the policy trace, though, it's going to give us a little bit uh, clearer information. We look here, and we'll click View Log. And you'll notice here you have the sign in URL. So this is where we signed into. Uh, this was the host name of the device, uh, our secure access service. Here's the IP address. Here's the browser type that was used, um, the internal port. And then we authenticated or attempted to authenticate with Alex against our LDAP server that we have configured. And you'll notice that res the response that came back, we've got the, the account actually in our LDAP server. Here we come back with Alex Agent. Uh, they're part of the employees group in our pulse.local domain. But the password that comes back, wrong password. So that's pretty straightforward, really easy, okay? Wrong password. So let's try it again. This time, we'll type in the correct password. So let's start recording again. Well, I, I, should, I guess we should actually stop recording. So we'll start the recording again. This is the key. It requires the user interaction with you. So if a user is saying, I can't sign in, then it's going to be a key factor for them to actually come back and, and uh, sign in. OK, so we'll uh, come back here. We'll sign in with Alex one more time. This time, we'll use the correct password. Now I get a message right away that comes back and says, you are not allowed to sign in. So again, the message is slightly different. It's not the same as before. Before it said invalid username or password. This time it's saying you are not allowed to sign in. So the key here is that um, this is now becoming an authorization issue rather than an authentication issue. And we can verify that by going back to the policy trace. Uh, we'll go ahead and stop recording. All right, now we've got a lot more to go with here. Now, sometimes when you, have, when you look through this log, you're going to find a lot of information here that's a little bit uh, overwhelming <laughs> because it seems like a, some of it's going to be a little bit repetitive. But as we scroll through here just quickly, you can see here's our sign-in URL again, the browser, the port. Let's look at the authentication. This time, the authentication was successful. So we know for sure that we're signing in with the correct username and password. So now we go in and we're, we're beginning the next process, right, which is the authorization. What are you allowed to have? So this is where the authentication policy um, might come into play. Uh, could be also the role mapping and role restrictions taking place. So let's take a look. Here we have, uh, we're part of the employees group. Um, so we verify that here. Then we scroll down further, and we see, again, we have to go almost to the bottom to find out what went wrong, right? So uh, we see the attributes assigned to the user. But now we get to the actual role mapping part, and it says, okay, well, we're mapped to the roles by groups equals employees. But then it says the users not did not get mapped to any roles. So for some reason, Alex isn't getting mapped to any roles. So my next step then is to verify that my role mapping rules are correct. So now I go to role mapping. 
And now, <laughs> obviously, I've purposely set this up so that it would fail here. Look at the actual rule itself. The group is employees, but I'm actually not assigned to any roles at this time. So this is an obvious configuration mistake on my part. I've forgotten to assign the proper role. Now, this happens actually more often than you'd think. I mean, it seems like a pretty easy mistake, and that's maybe that's why it happens so often. People will maybe add the roles, but they'll forget to hit Save Changes, or maybe they'll hit Save Changes, but they will forget to actually click the Add button. So these kind of things happen quite often, but the Policy Trace can help us resolve these issues rather quickly. So now I save my changes. And let's go ahead and try this one more time. I'll sign in with Alex. And we're in. Okay, so now it worked. And now I've got my applications, my bookmarks, everything that I would want. Okay. So this is a relatively simple example of how you can use the policy trace for uh, the benefit of your actual uh, configuration troubleshooting. Uh, it, it, is, can, it can be used to troubleshoot actual user connections. So the next question would be, well, what if it wasn't a role mapping role? In the case of the example I showed you, it was a very simple mistake that was made at the configuration side. So the mistake was made here on the Juno's Pulse Secure Access Service. But what if the issue was not that? Uh, maybe from the policy trace, all, you could see that everything was configured correctly on role mapping. Well, it could be an endpoint compliance issue. It could be that the agent or the endpoint is not using the correct software. Um, so it could be a host checker restriction. Uh, it could be uh, a missing certificate. So the policy trace will actually tell us that as well. It will tell us if we did not pass an authentication policy. It will tell us if we did not... Uh, meet a certain role restriction. So that's where we can use the policy trace for just about anything that has to do with configuration and endpoint compliance. Where the policy trace sometimes uh, comes up short would be identifying network issues. Again, if there were some type of uh, third-party device here in between that was blocking traffic, uh, that was perhaps preventing authentication from occurring on the backend server, then the Policy Trace does not always identify those issues as well. But that's where we have other tools, such as the TCP dump, um, the session recording. Those other configuration options will help you as well. So you can learn more about the Policy Trace and other, the other troubleshooting tools available if you go to the Juniper uh, training website. It's at juniper.net forward slash training. You'll find about all our different courses that we offer, the various learning bytes beyond this learning byte that you've been watching today. Uh, there is a brand new course on the Juno's Pulse Secure Access Service that will be coming out in July in 2012. Also, uh, a Juno's Pulse Access Control course is already out. Uh, and you can take that for, uh, for the Juno's Pulse Access Control Service. So that includes the training for today, and I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology-specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.